What's going on, everybody? Welcome to part two of the Cats vs. Dogs kind of Kaggle competition where we left off. We've begun kind of converting our data to something more acceptable to our uh, convolutional neural network. And now what we're going to do is write one more function. It's pretty similar to the one that we just wrote, but it's going to be for the, act, for the, for the testing data. Um, and hopefully I remember to explain something when we get there. But anyway, let's go ahead. Uh, let's do define. Whoops, what have I done? I don't know what I just did. Define process test and let me make sure we got some space here. Process test data. And what we're gonna do here is testing data. It's gonna actually be pretty similar to the other one. I would copy and paste, but I'm kind of fearful of messing it up. There's quite a few edits. So anyway, for image in TQ DM of OS.lister tester, whatever it is. Um, first of all, the path will be same as before, actually, os.path.join the tester and whatever that image is. Then we're going to say image num. This is actually, this is the ID kind of of the image. So image.split. Um, and if all this isn't making sense while we're doing this, um, I will explain it momentarily. Um, or maybe it'll make more sense to explain now. So, so... So the training data is what has the 25,000 images. And these are labeled images. So it's, you know, dog one, cat five, and so on, all the way through. So we have, we know the image is the features, right? Uh, and then the label is dog or cat. That's our training data. And when we train our neural network, we're gonna train and test the accuracy actually using the training data. So this can be kind of confusing. So. Uh, using training data, and in, in fact, what we will do is separate out probably a thousand or five hundred of the training data, and actually that'll be out of sample training data or out of sample testing data, I guess. Um, but that's that's our testing data just to test the accuracy of the network. But then there's the actual competition test data that doesn't have labels; it's just images and their numbers. So the image number is basically the ID, and that's what we're going to submit. To, we're going to use the ID and then our prediction. And I'm pretty sure that the prediction is a scale of dogness, basically. So like, what's the percentage that you, your your uh, model thinks it's a dog? Um, yeah, the predicted probability of the image being a dog. So anyway, um, that's what we're doing there. So the test data here is actually the Kaggle test data. It doesn't have a label and so on. So we're going to resize it. So image equals, and again, actually, I'm just going to do cv2.resize like this, and then cv2.imread. So we're resizing imread of something. But first, I'm going to just go ahead and do, I'm going to just copy this tuple here. Copy, paste. And then the imread that we're actually going to be reading in is um, the path, whatever that is. So right here, path. And then this will be cv2 dot imread gray scale. So it's kind of running off the screen, but it's basically the same thing as we did up here. In fact, I think it's just an identical line. We should have just copy and paste it. Why didn't anybody tell me to do that? Anyway, finally, testing data dot append. Um, we need um, basically, ooh, do we? Let's see. No, yeah, we did the list form. Okay, testing data dot append um, np array of the, the image itself. And then we also want to throw in that image num because that's the ID. So later we can just iterate through this, make the predictions, and then we'll store it to a CSV at the very end so we can submit it. Um, We'll just do np.save. There's no need for a shuffle. np.save. Uh, we'll save the test data. Dot numpy. Testing data. And then finally, we'll return testing data. Now, when it comes time to uh, train anything, let me make sure I ran everything else. Yep. Um, we can call one of two things. We can either say train data equals create train data, like so, or if you already have train data, you could say train data equals np.load uh, train data.mpy. Now, you can't, you wouldn't just say, you know, if, if 
the file exists. You, you could check if the file existed via OS, but the problem is we don't, it doesn't need to just exist. It needs to be of the exact same dimensions as, a, uh, you know, basically this dimension. So I'm just, we'll just manually change that. We can't really program anything in there. Um, okay, so let's run it, see if we have any errors. It should start doing our processing of the, um, yeah, the 25,000 images. So there it goes. And, and this nice progress bar is thanks to TQDM. Super cool. Um, now, while we're waiting on that, let me pull up uh, Python program at net. Um, you should be able to just search TF learn, come here. And this will be the older one. This is like the actual, you know, handwritten code for uh, TensorFlow. But we can actually take the TF Learn code basically from here. So I'm gonna just copy like all of this, copy, and I'm going to come over here and paste. A lot of code. Let me zoom out a little bit. This is going slow. I expected this to be done by the time we come back. Uh, we don't need the MNIST data, um, but everything else we do need. Uh, we don't need it to define our X and Y data. And I'm going to actually, we can redefine this stuff later. The ConvNet itself will not be a 20, you know, the input layer won't be 28 by 28. It's gonna be 50 by 50, but we actually are using um, uh, variable for that so it's image size by image size um the output layer is not 10 uh this was for the mnist you know handwritten digit classification so that had 10 examples we actually just have two it's dog or cat um then we have the learning rate here we set it as 0 0.01 and before that's a pretty low learning or a pretty fast learning rate anyway we're going to just set lr so we can change it later and then um, we will say model equals comnet, but we're gonna we're just gonna cut the other one for now. Um, and then, man, I was hoping to, I just don't want to get started talking on the next thing and have this have an error, and then we gotta go back and all that. Um, the other thing I will say is, uh, especially here. So let me do this too. So I'm gonna say tensor tensor board dir equals log. So on like Linux and probably Mac, this is super simple. It just automatically logs to like slash temp. But on Windows, it doesn't. You gotta be really yeah. Like you can be relative here, but then when you go to do the tensor uh, tensor board call, you have to be very explicit and give it a name for some reason. Um, I have no idea why, but if you're on Windows, make sure you do exactly what I do. <laughs> if you're on some other operating system, feel free to do whatever the heck you want to do. But on Windows. Just word for word, don't forget the log there, and then don't move it over like that. <laughs> and uh, and then, yeah, do what I do when we call up TensorBoard. Because uh, we actually haven't covered TensorBoard yet. Uh, so this will be probably, this will be the first time in that series that we've covered, talked about it. Okay, so the training data is done. This is our ConvNet. Um, and hopefully there's really no questions here because we've pretty much already covered how the ConvNet works. Um, now what we're gonna do is actually go through training the ConvNet, but I think I think I'll save that for the next one. Let's just run this, make sure everything imports and all that. And if so, um, I'll continue on in the next the next video. Looks good. So in the next video, we'll actually um, you know create our X and Y data and our training and test data, and actually train the network and probably make some tweaks. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to this point, uh, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the very next video.